Hello everyone and thank you for registering to watch this Kingdom webcast on the new tool within Velpac called HiDev, available within Velpac for the Kingdom 2015 release. My name is Cathy Cowley and I work for Equipoise Software Limited who developed Velpac and HiDev on behalf of IHS. Before we begin, there are a couple of housekeeping items I need to make you aware of. Firstly, make sure your speaker volume is up so you can hear clearly. And there is no telephone dial in this webcast since it is audio only, which means if you ask a question, I can't hear you. Any questions that you do have, there is a Q&A window on your screen which you can type questions into. We will get back to you with the answers either during the webcast or shortly afterwards, depending on the complexity of the question, as we have your email addresses recorded from the registration. OK, so let's get on with the webcast. Velpac provides advanced velocity modelling and depth conversion features over and above the simple and dynamic depth conversion capabilities within Kingdom. It enables analysis of well and seismic velocities to allow for data or parametric driven depth conversion of simple grids and also multi-Z horizon interpretations. In addition to depth converting surfaces and generating velocity volumes, Velpac can also help assess the uncertainty in the depth conversion. This will be covered in a forthcoming webcast in this series. However, today I would like to focus on a unique new feature of Velpac 2015 that we call High Def Velocity Volume Generation. One common feature required of depth conversion velocity volumes is to add more detail so the volume may be used for a greater variety of uses, from better depth conversion between wells to providing a background geological model for seismic inversion, reservoir characterization, or bright or dim spot studies, for example. The High Def tool is an exciting new module in Kingdom 2015 VELPAC that takes a background model and adds the character of the sonic logs to that volume in a geological and geophysically consistent way. So the resultant velocity volume will still be accurate for depth conversions, tie the wells and retain the velocity gradient in the low frequencies of the volume, but with log scale detail. So it doesn't simply spread log velocity data between wells, but it uses the velocity trend in the input volume to propagate well velocities in a geophysically meaningful fashion. The geological constraints can be provided either in the tool or by importing an external geological model. Input velocity volumes may come from Kingdom dynamic depth conversion volumes, Velpac velocity volumes, or any external SEGY velocity volume. The tool is easy to use and is highly intuitive for both geologists and geophysicists. HIDEF uses Krieging to distribute sample values from the sonic logs between layers, taking into account the background trend from the supplied velocity model and the geological layering defined in each layer. The detail velocities are used to depth convert each layer and a residual correction computed to ensure the velocities tie the formation tops at the wells. If data are unavailable over an area, it will blend the volume with the existing volume and wells and layers can be individually selected and controlled. The residual error correction is then applied to the velocities using the same method as the initial distribution of sonic velocities to ensure a self-consistent volume. So it provides a better volume for the depth conversion and is an ideal input for inversion studies, pore pressure prediction models, and reservoir characterization. Both these profile displays are from HIDEF. As you can see from the traditional model in the top display, the standard velocity volume being displayed does not conform to the well information. Zooming into an area, you can see the well trace more clearly and that the velocity volume does not conform to the well information. Within high def, for each layer, the well velocity log data is detrended. For each log sample in the layer, for each well, 3D Krieging is used to propagate residual scalars using the background model trend, applying structural constraints defined for each layer in the geological model. Again, zooming in, you can see the velocity conforms much better with the well information. The geological behaviour of each layer is defined by assigning each layer one of three spread types, 
cut from top, cut from base or stretched and squeezed. When the process is run, the layers are flattened onto a datum, processed and then returned to the original layer structure. On this slide, you can see an example of the same profile with the geological behaviour of the middle layer having been changed within high def. The top display is cut from top. The layers remain parallel to the base but cut at the top. Zooming in, you can see the top velocity is drawn down to be parallel to the base of the layer. The middle profile displays cut from base. The layers remain parallel to the top but cut at the bottom. Zooming in, here the red velocity is remaining parallel to the top of the layer. The bottom profile displays stretch and squeeze. A well will be squeezed or stretched to fill the layer horizon regardless of the width of the layer. Zooming in, here you see the red velocity being stretched where the layer goes thick. As you can see from these examples, the volumes produced can look very different depending on which spread type you're choosing. Note that it is the user who is expected to have the geological knowledge of the area in order to make the correct selection of cut type. Just before we go in to look at how the program works, this slide shows comparative displays from within Kingdom between a dynamic depth conversion volume, a VELPAC velocity volume and the more detailed velocity volume generated in high def. So let's move on to actually looking at the high def program. Here is a standard VELPAC screen. High def is accessed from the tools drop down from the top menu. Select OK to replace any existing files it has made and it will begin to open. The first thing it asks you to do is select the background velocity model that you want to use within high def. So I'm double clicking on this segue. Say no to generating 2D background velocity data. And so high def is now opened. The display starts with the surface map, similar to what you would see in VELPAC. Over to the left are two trees. One shows what is within the high def program. Initially, it will come up with the wells from VELPAC. And under seismic trace, you'll see the background velocity seg y volume that has been read in. The model tree shows what data are available from the VELPAC project within the current high def project. For example, under each layer, there are surface grids from the VELPAC project stored which you can use later to do a depth conversion within high def. Now, if we press the well tab, we can see the high def display given the wells and the background velocity model loaded. The first well that is displayed is well 48142. These background colors you see are set randomly and denote the layers as defined from the VELPAC layer definition at that well. This first panel display shows the well velocity log in black, the velocity trend from the background velocity model shown in red, and the high def velocity curve, which is shown in yellow. The velocity trend from the background velocity model, which is the red, is from the nearest trace it can find in the velocity seg y file. Panel two and three are diagnostic, showing how the depth is being worked out. Panel 2 shows a black line, which are the depths to add to the log to tie to the background model, and the depths to add to the log to tie the high def model, which is the red line. Note on the scale below the display that the red line should have low values trending towards zero compared to the black line, as this well demonstrates clearly. The rightmost panel shows a cumulative depth error through the layer. The residual error is divided evenly on a per sample basis through each event. Going back to the first panel, the high def calculator velocity curve is in yellow. In this case, this curve conforms almost exactly to the well trace. This is because the high def smooth routine is off.
However, smoothing takes place on the data before production of the final volume to reduce the variations of the well logs into general trends. We can view what the smooth trace would look like by toggling the smooth option on. This is done by going to the high def flyout and clicking the smooth active check button on and off. Look at the red curve on panel 2 which shows the depths you would need to add to the log to tie the high def model and the yellow curve on panel 1 and see how they change depending on whether the smooth active is on or off. The smoothing parameters can also be changed in this panel. Smoothing is achieved by the savitsky gole filter technique, which is a digital filter that can be applied to a set of digital data points for the purpose of smoothing the data, that is, to increase the signal-to-noise ratio without greatly distorting the signal. Here is a link on the screen for further information of this technique if you'd like to read more about it. The smoothing defaults are standard, and changing them will change the depths to add to the log to tie the high-def model shown as the red trace on panel 2 and will make it drift further away from zero. So you see that with smooth active off, the yellow curve in panel 1 lies almost exactly on the well trace, as would be expected. With smooth on, the yellow curve in panel 1 presents a more average picture of the well trace. Continuing looking at well curve 48142, you'll see that there is a bad bit of curve around 550 to 600 meters per second, shown in the black trace. This may mean that you don't want to use the high def generated model for this layer, for this well, since the well trace data is bad. In which case, you can turn off the high def model for that layer, or for the whole well, and use the background model instead. This is done by going to the general flyout, finding the well tab, going to the well properties and selecting use background model for layer number one. You will see the yellow trace on panel one immediately move to lie on the red trace since they are now using the same information. The red tie curve in panel two also changes for the same reason to conform with the black trace since it shows the tie to the background model. When you have done this, we can go into the Project Parameter tab, which allows us to see at a glance what parameters have been set for each well in the model. Moving to well 48142, by scrolling down through the Project Parameters, you can see that the Use Background box for Layer 1 for this well has been checked automatically. This is the same input as in the General Well tab, and you could equally well use the project parameters here to turn off layers or indeed whole wells. Now let's look at the data as a profile by going into the profile tab. 2D lines, 3D inlines, cross lines and random or arbitrary lines are supported as profiles. Let's display an inline that goes through a well within the model. Select the inline you want to display by going into the general profile flyout I'm going to select inline 5920. Pressing apply, a slice of the high def volume is being generated for the selected inline. So here you see the profile display and the two well logs that are near to the profile. Zooming in on the area of the profile near the wells, you can see that these tracks are showing the velocity well trace. The width of the colour bar associated with the well trace velocity is emphasised to make it visually clearer. Hovering over the well trace, it says how many metres away from this profile the well trace actually is. I don't know if you can read that, but it says 200 metres away. If we briefly go back to the map display and zoom in, The green line shows where inline 5920 is and its proximity to the two wells that have traces that are on the profile display. Going back to the profile display, we can look at the general flyout to show two sets of options we have mentioned. 
the well distance here is set to 1000. This means that any well within 1000 meters of the profile will be displayed on a selected profile. The well trace color bar width is also set here. Here you see that the high velocities shown in the wells in the last layer have been propagated through the layer, keeping the propagation parallel to the base. This means that this layer has been set within the high def tab as cut from top, as discussed in the presentation earlier. Now to emphasize what high def is doing, in the flyout we will change the volume type option to the background velocity. So this will display the background velocity that was used within VELPAC to do a depth conversion. As you can see, the detail within the volume that high def produces is now missing. Another useful tool is from the general flyout to select the difference volume type. This will give you the difference between the background velocity and the high def velocity. Opening the colour table, and presenting it next to the profile. You can see that in the last layer, there are differences between the velocities of plus or minus 1000 meters per second or more. If we have a quick look at the well panel for this well, 48, 14, 4, for the bottom layer, you would expect to see the same discrepancy between the background velocity model and the real trace and the high def volume. Going back to the profile. And turning it back into the high def volume. You can see how much closer the volume conforms to the well. Now let's take a more detailed look at the geological model parameters grouped and defined by each layer under the high def spread parameters. Each layer has a Krieging range distance parameter and a spread type. The Krieging range is the distance that the log propagation occurs. It defaults to cover the entire grid area, but this can be adjusted for specific layers. Looking at the spread type, you can see the three that has been mentioned before, cut from top, cut from base, and stretch and squeeze. And as we have already seen, we have the additional option of just selecting to use the background velocity model for any particular layer. Changing the layer spread type values randomly, then pressing apply, you can see instantly the changes the spread type makes to the high def volume. Here, for example, the base layer has been changed to be cut from base, which means the velocities will now run parallel to the top of the layer. It must be emphasised again here that geological knowledge is required to get these parameters correct for the layers in your own model. For more complex geological scenarios, such as reverse or complex faulting, it is worth mentioning at this point an external geological model can be imported from third-party software such as LS Software's PaleoScan and HiDef will propagate log velocities using that. If we go back to the map module, it is possible to draw a random line going through a number of wells by selecting the toggle button here and then clicking over the wells a random line is being made joining up through all the wells. Now if we go to the general flyout, the profile tab, select the line type as random and apply. 
A random profile slice is being processed, which we can look at in the profile mode when it is finished. And there it is. I'll change the scale of the display. Change the well color width bar to emphasize it. And there we have the perfect display going through all the relevant wells in the project. All these features so far have been designed as QC tools for you to get the best possible high definition velocity from your data. Once you're happy with what the displays are showing you, the entire volume can be processed the first time. It is easy to set up, but it will take a while to generate, so I won't do it now, but I will show you how. Go to the high def flyout and pin it out to hold it on the screen. In the 3D range, the output type is set to instantaneous and that's the type of seg y velocity I want to generate. Check that the output seg y directory is set and the name is set to instantaneous seg y as your output file. The run 3D tab allows a user to specify how many local CPUs are used for the velocity volume generation to maximize throughput on your machine. In this case there are eight processors on my computer and I've set the number of tasks to be eight so that all eight CPUs on my computer will be used in batch mode to create the velocity volume that I want. Pressing apply will set the volume generation running but as I said, I won't run it now because it does take some time to process. So as you can see, it is very easy to generate the high def volume and intuitive for geologists to easily add knowledge to the procedure. The resultant velocity volume generated is useful for depth conversions, petrophysical characterization and pore pressure prediction workflows. But the depth conversion of surfaces can also be done directly within high def. And an interesting way to analyse the volume you've just produced is to use it to depth convert your Velpac surfaces you read into HIDEF when you started the project. You can then look at the difference between the depth grids generated in Velpac versus the depth grids produced in HIDEF from the newly generated SEGY volume. So, to make depth grids or a number of other types of grids from the newly created SEGY file, we go to the Tools flyout. and the Make Grids tab. Here are the selection of grids that will be generated. If you don't want them all to be generated, just uncheck the box. Grids will be generated using the same AOI as the original Velpac grids, and the Krieging range is set per layer. Keeping the Apply Error box checked will mean the error will be applied per layer when grids are being generated. Finally, you need to select the input SEGY file name, which is what we have just generated, the instantaneous SEGY. Clicking apply when ready will start the process of generating all the grids you have requested. When the process is complete, the grids will be available in the high def project tree. Here are all the grids that have been generated within high def. Closing the flyout and zooming in to the map. I'm going to select the depth for the first layer. And there we have on display the depth converted grid for the first layer within high def. As you may recall, we also check the apply error box for the error to be applied every layer when we depth converted. This error has been stored and a grid produced of these errors in the error grid slot. Double clicking on the error grid for layer 2, for example, will show you this grid. You can post the error values on the map 2 by opening the general map flyout and changing the map posting type from none to, in this case, 
error before. As you may expect, the greatest errors causing various amounts of bullseyes can be seen over the wells. The reason we focus on the errors here is that now we have the error grids, we can use them to process the instantaneous velocity volume we have just run to produce another new volume which processes the error for each layer within it. Going into the tools flyout and the process tab, we can select the process type as being corrected instantaneous velocity. Check that the input seg y is the instantaneous velocity that we've just generated. And the output seg y file name prompts us the corrected instantaneous velocity seg y. Pressing apply will take some time, but it will produce the corrected instantaneous velocity volume. When the volume has finished generating, you can look at it within the profile using your random line that you already produced on your map. By going into the general tab and making sure that your line type is set to random, specify the volume type as one that is produced by high def as opposed to the background model. And then select which velocity volume you want to look at. In this case, it'll be the corrected instantaneous velocity you've just generated. Zooming in on an area of this random profile near one of the wells, you can see how very well the profiles tie with the wells now that the instantaneous velocity has been corrected using the error grids that were generated. Once you have QC'd your new volume in profile mode, you can redo the depth grids within high def. Go to the tools menu, make grids, and everything has been set up as it was before, except you need to select the new corrected instantaneous velocity volume. So press apply and the new grids will be made. Note the difference grids here. These show the difference between the high def generated grid and the original VELPAC generated grid. So if we click on the depth difference, it shows the difference at each point between the original VELPAC grid and the high def. You can immediately see that there might be some discrepancy here that needs looking at because this is a bullseye hovering over a well. If you hover over a contour, you can see what values it's displaying. And turning on the spectacles icon, we will show the X, Y and Z value of the actual node over which you are hovering. So in high def so far, we have made instantaneous velocity volume. We have produced depth grids from them, which have produced error grids. We have from those error grids tweaked the instantaneous velocity volume to make a corrected instantaneous volume, which we are more than happy to tie the wells. And now the only thing that remains for the high def process to be complete is to turn the corrected instantaneous velocity volume into an average velocity so that it can be read into Kingdom. This once again is done in the tools option by changing the process type instantaneous to average. Select the output name which will be as you see called instantaneous to average and then pressing apply will produce the velocity volume that 